Blood is 50 to 60 percent plasma, which is mostly water. The other 40 to 50 percent is made up of the formed elements or cellular portion. The formed elements are made in the bone marrow. They are cells or fragments of cells. Erythrocytes are the red blood cells and they make up most of the formed elements, while platelets and leukocytes or the white blood cells are less than 1% in the blood. Erythrocytes are more commonly known as red blood cells. They are biconcave discs, which means they are like a laminated donut. They are shaped like a circle with a dip in the middle on both sides, not a hole in the center. This increases the surface area of the cell while still allowing it to be flexible enough to squeeze through small capillaries. They are made in the bone marrow and are produced without organelles, including a nucleus. This limits the repair capabilities of these cells, which is why they have a limited lifespan. These cells are filled with hemoglobin to carry as much oxygen as possible. The purpose of the red blood cells are to load up with oxygen in the lungs and deliver that oxygen to the tissues and the cells of our bodies. The kidney produces a hormone, erythropoietin, that can increase red blood cell production when oxygen levels decrease, such as occurs at high altitude. When the blood cells have reached their lifespan of approximately 120 days or 4 months, they are removed from the circulation, primarily by the spleen, but also by the liver. Once the red blood cell is removed from the circulation by the spleen or liver, macrophages break it down. Hemoglobin is broken down into a heme portion and a globulin portion. Heme is further broken down into iron, which is taken back to the bone marrow to be used again for the production of new red blood cells. Another product of heme is bilirubin, which is a waste product, so it is excreted by the liver as bile and ultimately out of the body. The globulin portion of hemoglobin is broken down into amino acids and used by the body. Anemia is a condition that is associated with reduced oxygen transport and is ultimately a red blood cell problem. There are many different types of anemias, each with their own cause. We will illustrate three types as examples. Pernicious anemia, pernicious can mean sneaky, is when there appears to be a sufficient number of red blood cells. However, those red blood cells do not have enough hemoglobin inside them and therefore are limited in their ability to carry and deliver oxygen. This is often due to lack of vitamin B12, affecting the formation of red blood cells. Vitamin B12 is found in many foods we eat, but a special agent from the stomach is needed for us to be able to absorb it. Some elderly patients have reduced stomach acid and this special agent called intrinsic factor and may develop pernicious anemia. Therefore, patients with pernicious anemia may need vitamin B12 injections rather than supplements that are swallowed. Aplastic anemia is when the bone marrow does not produce a sufficient amount of red blood cells, so there are fewer circulating and delivering oxygen. Hemolytic anemias are a type where the red blood cells are being destroyed, so they too have reduced oxygen delivery capability. Polycythemia is when there is an excessive amount of red blood cells. Causes for this include exposure to high altitude when there is reduced oxygen in the air, so the body has to produce more red blood cells to compensate, increasing oxygen delivery to the tissues. The low oxygen levels in the blood is detected by the kidney, which in turn releases the hormone erythropoietin, which stimulates the bone marrow to increase red blood cell production. Blood doping is an illegal performance enhancing method to increase oxygen delivery to working muscles, increasing endurance. A legal way to increase red blood cells in the body for an athletic event is to train at high altitude. This is why the Olympic Training Center is in Boulder, Colorado. There is also an injectable pharmaceutical drug, referred to as EPO, which mimics the body's own production of erythropoietin, increasing red blood cell production and therefore oxygen delivery. To determine the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood, red blood cell amount or hemoglobin amount can be evaluated. Some of the many tests on red blood cells include hematocrit, red blood cell count, and hemoglobin concentration. Hematocrit is a test to evaluate the percentage of red blood cells in the blood. 
the red blood cell count is a more quantitative evaluation that requires the blood cells to be counted in a specific volume and the number extrapolated to the number for the whole body. Hemoglobin concentration tests for the amount of hemoglobin that is in the red blood cells, giving an indication of the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood.